welcome to this lecture. In the last lecture, we looked at the agile development. In the changing software projects, we had seen that over the years, a lot of changes have occurred to the software projects themselves. From multi year projects, these have become couple of weeks and also lot of reuse and customization is being made and from product development, many projects are now service oriented projects. In this context, the agile model has become extremely popular. In any software development organization you go, see that large number of projects, they are following the agile development practices. And we had said that agile is actually an umbrella term, there are certain characteristics that all agile development projects have to follow, but then there are several methodologies which come under the agile umbrella and two prominent methodologies here are the extreme programming and the scrum. In this lecture, we look at these two agile methodologies, the extreme programming and scrum. Let us uh, proceed. We will first look at the extreme programming also called as XP. It was proposed by Kent Beck in 1999. The name extreme here implies that uh, the best practices are taken to the extreme level. Whatever works well in some projects, why not put it to the maximum use? So, that is the main focus of this model and it has uh, all other characteristics of a agile model. So, the principle here is that if something works and is good, why not maximize its use. Now, let us see what are some of the good practices and how these are taken to the extreme level. Research results suggest that code review is a very good practice. Code review is much better than testing. Code review can eliminate bugs in the software most cost effectively and even can eliminate bugs which cannot be detected by testing or is very difficult to detect by testing. So, it has been accepted by all developers that code review is a good practice. The extreme programming proposes to take this code review to extreme level by pair programming. But then what is pair programming? In pair programming, code is written by two programmers on one desk. So, on one computer there are two programmers. One programmer writes the code while the other programmer reviews that and then they interchange every half an hour or so. So, one programmer writes the other reviews then they switch their place. So, two programmers have understanding of the code they put their mind together and also the review any mistakes and so on is pointed out by the other programmer. The other good practice is testing. Testing is good 
it makes software more reliable. To make testing, to take testing to the extreme level, the extreme programming suggest to write the test cases continuously. So, that is called as test driven development. In test driven development, even before the code is written, the test is written, the test cases are written and after the test cases are written, the code is written and each time the code is written to some extent, the test cases are run to see if the code passes that, otherwise the code is modified. Incremental development is good, it said that it eliminates lot of problems of the waterfall model and therefore, extreme programming says come up with a new increment every few days. Simplicity is good because it produces less bugs, easy to maintain and therefore, the extreme programming says take the simplicity to the extreme level and for that it says that only focus on what is needed now and do the simplest design for that do not worry about what will be needed after 10 years that may never be needed do not worry about that at all do the best design under the present circumstance. So, pair programming test driven development incremental development in fee, every few days simplicity of the design these are important characteristics of the extreme programming. The other things that are taken to the extreme are designing is good. So, do designing after the code works, everybody will design daily they will refactor once the code works put design into it that is called as refactoring. Architecture overall design is important. So, metaphor that is the agile principle, everybody will define and refine the metaphor. Integration testing is important, we had seen that in the waterfall model, the delay starts from integration testing, the scheduled slippage initially starts at the integration testing and becomes worse after the integration testing. But here in the extreme programming, we must build every day and whatever we build same day we must integrate all together and integrate several times a day continuous integration. So, that later surprises are not there. just like any other agile model enhance communication among team members face to face communication and also with the customer. Simplicity build something simple that will work rather than make it extremely complicated about something which never be required. Take continuous customer feedback and the customer can be part of the team and if the code structure has become bad, discard it, write new code. Coding is a important place in extreme programming, utmost attention need to be placed on coding. Testing is important and also listening to the customer is essential to develop good quality product. So, listen very carefully to the customer feedback. Designing after the code works put design into it called as refactoring. Feedback is important learning the exact customer requirement. The planning are only short term and each uh, 
story or requirement is assigned a cost and these are grouped into deliverable increments. Design is keep it simple principle use of CRC cards that is class responsibility collaboration which is uh, pioneered by Kent Beck. We will see the technique as we look into the design aspects. And whenever there are confusion about what is the best way to go, create a spike solution alternate between choose between alternative solution by designing prototypes. And after a code works, refactor and put design into it. The coding is uh, by test driven development, first write the test cases before any code is written and then write the code until the it passes the test cases written. Pair programming is encouraged, all software that is developed are tested daily and acceptance tests are defined and are executed. These are the full list of the extreme programming practices, planning only short term plans are made, small religious metaphor, simple design, testing continuously write and execute test cases, refactoring, pair programming, collective ownership not only that two programmers they write a piece of code, but any programmer should be able to modify any other programmers code. Continuous integration every day whatever code is written has to be integrated with the existing code. 40 hours week customer must be part of the team and coding standards to be followed. As you can see that many of these are actually philosophical and little bit sketchy and therefore, good quality manpower is needed for extreme programming or any other agile projects. It emphasizes test driven development, any increment starts with a user story. The first thing is to develop test cases based on the user story and then develop the software, get the customer feedback. Based on the customer feedback alter necessary and then put design into the code, make the code, refine it into good quality code and then take up the next feature. Extreme programming is successful in small projects and also the projects which are of challenging nature. Now, having looked at uh, several development models including some of the agile models, let us try to check our understanding with a few questions. Can you identify what are the stages of the waterfall model? It is a very, very basic question. Feasibility study, requirement analysis and specification, design, coding, unit testing, testing and maintenance, but then how are the feedback paths organized between them? What are the documents that are produced at the end of every phase? Now, next question is what are the disadvantages of the iterative waterfall model? If you recollect one major disadvantage is with respect to accommodation of change requests. 
the customer is required to identify all the requirements upfront. And the customer has to visualize what the software will be and it is extremely tough job. It is hard to identify all the requirements that are required at the beginning and invariably 40 percent or 50 percent of the requirements change during the development time itself. And therefore, the iterative waterfall model is uh, very inflexible. The second problem with the iterative waterfall model is that it is a heavy weight model emphasizes production of documents rather than production of code increments. The third disadvantage may be that it uh, does not allow overlapping of the phases and so on. We have discussed several points on disadvantages of iterative waterfall model. Please review them. Why has agile model become so popular? Okay, we discussed that the software projects have changed over year. The projects are now a short duration, lot of code reuse being made. And now the customer um, satisfaction is very important, need to deploy incremental software at the customer site and so on. What difficulties might be faced if no life cycle model is followed for a certain large project. So, that is basically exploratory life cycle model is followed. Okay, the answer would be that the project may not complete, there will be too much of cost overrun, it will cost too much, it will take too much time to develop or it may not complete at all, the quality of the pro, uh, software will be poor and so on. Now, suggest a suitable life cycle model for a software which is to be developed for an academic institution to automate its activities like co -register, course registration and grading, fee collection, staff salary, purchase and in st store inventory. The software would be developed by tailoring a similar software that was developed by developed for another educational institution. It is expected that there will be 70 percent reuse of the code, 10 percent of new code to be written and 20 percent modification will be done. Waterfall model is clearly unsuitable for this, because uh, it will involve tailoring a similar software. So, an agile model can be a suitable answer for this. Which types of risks can be better handled using the spiral model compared to prototyping model? In prototyping model, the risks which can be identified upfront, those can be handled, but in the spiral model, the risks which appear after the development starts, they can be handled better. Which type of process model is suitable for the following project? Customization software. Okay, an agile model, payroll software for contract employees that would be an add-on to an existing payroll software. So, there is basically a small increment to a existing software, okay, this can be also an agile model. Which life cycle model would you select for the following project which has been awarded to us by a mobile phone vendor? A new mobile operating system upgrading the existing operating system needs to work well efficiently with 4G systems, needs to do power users minimization, directly upload backup data on cloud infrastructure maintained by a mobile phone vendor. So, there is lot of challenge in this project, new technology and therefore, an agile model will be suitable. Now, let us look at one more agile model 
which is also very popular, the scrum. The scrum model has uh, all the characteristics of an agile model, but it has its own characteristics over the agile model. One is uh, self organizing teams, the self organizing teams means that the small team they decide who will do which work. Here the terminologies are also a bit different, the increments are about a month and these increments are called as sprints and the requirements are captured as product backlog that is also another terminology with this is the software requirements are captured continuously and those which are yet to be developed are called as product backlog. This is the crux of the scrum model. The product backlog keep on arising and in the sprint planning meeting one of the product backlog that is a user story, these are all user stories so appear as product backlog some of them are chosen for the next sprint. A sprint is about a month long and this form the sprint backlog and then every day the developers meet. So, this is the scrum every day the developers meet the daily scrum. they identify <coughs> if any problem is being faced and then they provide any solution and then after the daily 10 15 minute meeting they go to do their work and the sprint backlog after it gets completed then there is a sprint review meeting and then the product increment is produced after the sprint review meeting is successful the product increment is deployed at the customer side. Here the project progresses in a series of sprints these are similar to the iteration time boxes the increments and typically about a month is the duration. In this sprint software increment is designed, coded and tested, but one thing is that once the sprint backlog is formed during the sprint for that one month no change to that is entertained. The idea here is that when the short term plan is made and the team is working on it we should not disturb it otherwise it will never converge. Here there are some terminologies which constitute the scrum framework. There are three roles in the team one is the product owner, the product owner is either a customer representative or one of the development team member. He acts as if he is the customer, he is called as a product owner. The scrum master who is actually the project manager and then the team members. There are some meetings here, these are called as ceremonies, the sprint planning meeting, sprint review meeting, sprint retrospective meeting and daily scrum meeting. There are some documents which are used the product backlog which is all the requirements, the sprint backlog which is basically the requirements for one sprint and then various types of burn down charts which uh, capture how far the project has progressed. 
the product owner acts on behalf of the customer, he may be a customer representative or may be a team member who acts uh, like the customer. The development team about 5 to 9 people with cross functional skills like testing, GUI development, database development and so on. The scrum master is the project manager, facilitates the scrum process and resolves any problems that the team may be facing and also interacts with the customer and also the top management and shields the team from outside influence. The product manage, the product owner acts as if the customer defines the features, decides on the release date, prioritizes the features according to what is his requirement, adjusts the features and priority value and then at the end of a sprint either accepts or rejects the result. The scrum master is actually the project manager removes any problems like uh, infrastructure etcetera, ensures that the team is fully functional, enables cooperation and seals the team from external interfaces. The scrum team members are actually 5 to 10 people, they are have expertise in various cross functional areas like quality assurance coding, user interface design, database etcetera. The team members are self organizing, they decide who can do the work best and then they decide among themselves. And in between one sprint membership is not changed, new members can be added only at the end of a sprint. We are towards the end of this lecture hour, uh, we will stop here and we will continue from this point in the next lecture. Thank you.